For millions of years, Mother Nature has been carefully selecting, crafting, and refining the human species to ensure its survival. From this consistent adaptation, as humans, we now look very different to our ancestors. But there is one aspect of our biological makeup that has not changed over this vast expanse of time, and I'd be willing to bet that it never will. If you're anything like me, I feel like staying up late and sleeping in is somewhat in my biological nature. I seem to come alive at night and then constantly want to hit the snooze button over and over again every morning. I've always been told that I need to get enough sleep, get the eight hours, go to bed early, you know, the usual stuff. I was always told how important sleep was, but I never really understood why. That is until I read this book. Matthew Walker is an English scientist and professor of neuroscience and psychology at the University of California, Berkeley. He is the founder and director of the Center for Human Sleep Science, and his book, Why We Sleep, became a number one Sunday Times bestseller and New York Times bestseller. Everything that I am sharing in this video can be found in his book, along with so, so much more. It is undoubtedly one of the most interesting, engaging, eye-opening, and simply life-changing books I've ever read. I first read it about a year ago and have since been utterly obsessed with sleep, and I really hope you can find value in this topic as well. First of all, we need to get rid of this ridiculous stigma that we've built up around sleep. People who get seven hours or more of sleep per night aren't soft, weak, or lazy. They're actually some of the smartest people among us. According to Matthew, those who sleep less than seven hours per night are sleep deprived, meaning your body is not getting enough sleep for your brain or any other organ in your body to function optimally. And I know, right? Anything less than seven hours? When I was at uni, it was like there was this constant competition as to who could get the least amount of sleep. The less sleep you got, the harder work you were fist bump for all nighters. But that's the thing. We now live in a society where sleep deprivation is celebrated and sometimes expected from employers. Apparently being successful means working harder and working harder means sleeping less. I do understand their logic though. It doesn't particularly make a whole lot of sense that every 16 hours or so, we need to stop sleep and become totally useless to society. Surely there could be a more efficient and effective way for us to spend this time. Matt does raise this point in his book and it had a surprisingly profound impact on me. From an evolutionary standpoint, sleep makes no sense. It's the time where for a good eight hours or so, we were completely exposed and vulnerable to predators. We weren't finding food or reproducing. We, in fact, weren't doing anything that we were evolutionary programmed to do to ensure the survival of our species. Why then would Mother Nature put us in this state if it wasn't absolutely vital to our survival? Especially when she's had so many thousands of years to improve and refine this biological aspect. Let's look at something Mother Nature has adapted to, food abundance and shortage. It's common knowledge that we're able to eat past satiety, leading to an increase in fat cells in the body, so that in times of food shortage or famine, we are able to survive. This can be attributed back to our great, 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 great ancestors when they experienced fluctuations in food availability. So the body created a food storage system through fat cells. But if sleep is just as vital as food is for human survival, why don't we have a similar mechanism for it? Because humans are the only species that deliberately deprive themselves of sleep for no apparent reason. Because humans are the only species that deliberately deprive themselves of sleep for no apparent reason. The only other time where a species has deliberately cut their sleep short is in periods of great starvation, 
where the species chooses to continue to hunt or forage for food for just that bit longer before giving in to sleep. And not all humans had this societal problem. This tendency to cut sleep short only extends back a few generations. It's so new that Mother Nature hasn't had to come up with a solution for insufficient sleep before now. A lot of people believe that they can function perfectly normally off seven hours or less of sleep. But unfortunately, Matthew here does not believe that to be the case. According to Matthew's research and findings, less than 1% of the overall human population express a rare gene mutation that allows a person to experience extended hours of sustainable wakefulness. Meaning, they can survive on five hours of sleep without experiencing severe health consequences. Unfortunately, you are more likely to be struck by lightning than to have this extremely rare mutation. Meaning, again, you need the seven hours or more of sleep. But what happens if you don't get it? Here are some simplified yet detrimental consequences of sleep deprivation. Increased forgetfulness, decreased ability to learn new things, significantly more vulnerable to dementia and Alzheimer's, increased risk of a heart attack, increased risk of cancer, decreased libido, more susceptible to weight gain, more susceptible to volatile emotions and outbursts, increased risk of suicidal thoughts and behaviors, and so much more. If you'd like to know whether or not you're sleep deprived, ask yourself this question. Do you need an alarm to wake you up in the morning? If yes, then you're sleep deprived. But here's the wonderful, wonderful thing about sleep. It's probably one of the most relaxing, simple and enjoyable ways to improve our overall health and well-being. And it's totally free. Here are some tips from Matthew's book to help you improve the overall quality of your sleep. No caffeine less than 10 hours before bed. Think about how long it takes for you to fall asleep and factor that in. I.e. if you want 8 hours of sleep, get to bed with enough time to allow yourself the chance to actually sleep for 8 hours. Reduce your screen time at least 1 hour before bed. Ensure your room is as dark as possible and try to create a realistic and maintainable sleep schedule. Wake up and go to bed at the same time each day. That way your body will fall into a rhythm and you'll soon find yourself tired close to bedtime and rested and ready to start your day in the morning. For something that is so vital and when lacking so detrimental, there really couldn't be a more positive method of rectification. I'm making this video because I want to make you slightly aware of a how vital it is to get enough sleep each night and b how strange this tendency is where we deliberately cut our sleep short. We may think it's normal but it's really not nor should it be. There is so much more I want to share with you but I don't think you'd be keen on a five hour video. I would love to make more videos exploring this topic of sleep, sleep deprivation, and anything else Matthew shares in his book. So if you would be interested in any of this, then please let me know in the comments below. Regardless, I would highly recommend checking out Matthew's book, Why We Sleep. It is incredibly well written. It is not a difficult read, but he's written it in such a thoughtful manner that it's so eloquent, yet so easy to understand. And a book like that is so necessary when we are in a sleep epidemic. As Matthew points out in his book, it is absolutely vital that each and every one of us try to get on top of this sleep deprivation problem for both our individual health and for our overall health as a society. If you are thinking about purchasing the book, or don't really want to, but want to hear more about the topic, then I would recommend checking out his podcast conversation with Joe Rogan, which I have linked in the description below. Okay, so that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found value in this video. It is a topic that I have been wanting to share for so long, but 
I just never thought that I was doing it justice because it's such a massive topic to try and cover in one video um, or just cover generally. And since reading this book, it has had a profound impact on my life. I no longer look down upon myself if I want to go to bed earlier or sleep in. I don't feel lazy or like I'm working, not working hard enough. I look at myself through a totally different lens because I know that I should listen to my body and get the sleep, especially when my body is telling me that I need it. It's not a crime to sleep more or get an adequate amount of sleep. It's not a sign of weakness or laziness. And similarly, not getting enough sleep is not a sign of motivation and strength. This stigma is absolutely ridiculous and I hope this video is a small step to getting rid of it. I upload new videos every Thursday. I really, really appreciate you being here and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, sorry. Did I wake you up?